In the previous few videos, we have been talking about high impact decisions and events and how to approach them. Essentially, we want to avoid negative high impact events and increase the chances of positive ones. We have discussed the concept of expected utility as well as the maximum possible harm the situation presents. While you probably shouldn't buy insurance on small things, homeowners insurance, health insurance and life insurance are all very, very important. This is because should an event happen and you do not have insurance, for example, your house burns down, you need an expensive surgery, etc., the impact could be devastating. We have also discussed the concept of hidden risks. Just because a negative impact is not immediate does not mean it won't eventually happen. In many situations, hidden risks increase because we try to achieve efficiency in some way. Remember the example that we discussed last time. Someone might drive too fast to save time, but in doing so, he is essentially increasing his chances of getting into a serious accident. In fact, it might be argued that the concept of efficiency is one that is emphasized far too much in everyday life and business. Oftentimes, the search for efficiency ends up exposing us to more negative events. Let me explain with an example. Recently, I read a very interesting book entitled How Not to be Wrong by Jordan Ellenberg. The book contains many useful material. In the book, George Stigler, a Nobel Prize winner in economics, is quoted as saying, if you never miss the plane, you are spending too much time in airports. What he means by this is that the earlier you are for your flight, the less likely you are to miss your plane. However, this also means you have wasted more time waiting around in the airport. In fact, the author did an expected utility computation to show that it is more efficient to be less early for your flights. Your chances of missing them may go up, but in the long run, it is more efficient. Now, I have some problems with this argument. Firstly, when you arrive early for a flight these days, there are many things you can do to not waste time. Read, work on your laptop, etc. But more importantly, by trying to increase your efficiency, you are decreasing your margin. This reduction in margin can expose you to several hidden and sometimes unknown risks. You are more likely to be late, so you will be in a hurry to catch the flight, which could cause stress, compared to the peace of mind that you have when you have enough margin. Also, having less margin could potentially cause you to drive faster to the airport, which increases chances of accidents, etc. And if you miss your flight, you increase the chances of something else down the line being negatively affected that you are not aware of it now. So, when it comes to avoiding negative outcomes and increasing the likelihood of positive events, I believe the biggest tool we have is the concept of margins. If you are allowing decent margins in your life, you can usually avoid the domino effect when something goes wrong. Sometimes it may appear that this reduces efficiency, but it is a worthwhile sacrifice if we can avoid some negative high impact events. If you have an appointment, meeting, etc., it is always good to arrive early. If something goes wrong, you have enough of a margin to absorb those negative effects. Allowing margins can also reduce stress in your life, which is one of the goals of this course. If you start studying for an exam a week in advance, you will be less panicked about it than if you had tried to cram the night before. If you plan carefully, increasing your margin does not always mean you lose efficiency as it is apparent in the example of going to the airport. For example, you can take a book with you to read if you arrive early. This also relates to an issue Daniel Kahneman discusses called the planning fallacy, which states that we are usually overly confident while planning and do not set aside enough time for things. When I was creating this course, for example, I underestimated the amount of time it would take to create all the content. Again, the only way to remedy these situations is by allowing higher margins. Efficiency does not always have to be related to time and planning. For example, if you are talking on the phone while driving, you have reduced your margin, but in a different way. You have reduced your capacity to be aware of other important things while on the road, such as someone running a red light. This could, of course, have catastrophic results. This is why you should plan a margin for all of your resources, not just time. For another example, I believe it is important to achieve a certain level of financial success. This is not to buy frivolous things, but rather to increase your margin. If something goes wrong that costs you a lot of money, this margin will stop it from being devastating. Of course, money cannot solve everything, 
but in a lot of cases, having at least some financial resources will be beneficial to you. When it comes to big events, we want to create enough margin so that we can avoid them rather than estimating their probabilities. If you have house insurance and your home burns down, you have given yourself a margin to deal with this situation effectively. It does not matter that the probability of a fire is low, the potential harm is great enough that this margin is absolutely necessary. This is what we call becoming probability independent. We will continue this discussion in upcoming videos and will discuss ways to increase our exposure to positive high impact events. Thank you for watching.